Welcome back to another episode of the Budget Overland Podcast. I'm your host, Benji, and today in studio, I've got a friend of mine I've met in Oklahoma at the Oki Overland Swap Meet. Kind of last minute, he showed up, I think, as people were tearing down because it was really hot. And that's the time, that's the night we went camping, and it was it was miserable. Uh, but anyway, nonetheless, in studio, we've got Jean-Louis Sebe, Sebe. Siabi. I'm an idiot. I don't even know why I try with people's names. But a lot You're of people good. might call you Jean, you know, from Facebook and stuff, but it is pronounced Jean-Louis. That's brilliant, yes. Jean-Louis Siabi. Jean-Louis, all right. Cool, man. You're from uh, Oklahoma, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's such an opportunity to get on these, uh, these shows and, and share our, our life stories a bit. You know, I think for you, it's even, you know, more interesting because you sort of randomly meet these people and you, you get mm-hmm. to have to figure out, you know, how to get them on the shows and stuff like that. So I think it's it's really cool to have, you know, these kind of connections and be able to get to meet people like you that have these resources and allow us to share our story. So thank you for having me on the show. For sure. Um, I, I live in Oklahoma, live in Oklahoma City. I've been living here now for, what, 11, 12 years now. It's sort of starting to become my, my second home. Uh, but I was originally born in a small country in West Africa called Togo. And... And then when I was just about eight years old or so, my family moved to Ghana, which is a neighboring country to Togo in West Africa. And then, and then from there, just kind of moved around a little bit, uh, a few months in, in Zurich, Switzerland, and then spent a few years in, in New York City. Uh, and then for the most part, uh, my family spent the most most of our years, me just through my teens in Buffalo, New York. So uh, New York State is sort of my home since, you know, kind of through Africa, we just moved around a couple of countries and then New York State felt more like where I, I, my life was a bit more stable. So, and then now Oklahoma being the, the second place. Uh, I did also live in Dallas for a year or so before moving to Oklahoma City. So my initial moves were from, uh, Buffalo to Dallas and then from Dallas to Oklahoma City and I've been I've been living here since so it's been it's been pretty good. So what's cool about like your whole story and everything is you're not just an overlander you're like a world traveler. <laughs> uh, that's like you're still you you still to this day if there's an opportunity you take it. Uh, can you kind of tell us how you got that drive or itch to go kind of travel, you know, abroad? Is that from your transition from uh, your home country to to United States? Was that like a taste of it? Or were you traveling before that? Uh, it's sort of really a, a childhood thing, really. Um, I, I, I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to grow up in a very diverse household where my dad, uh, most of his friends, you know, when I was growing up in, in my younger years, were all, most of them were Western Europeans and stuff like that. And so I grew up. Uh, around those people was always a very curious kid, you know, trying to find out more about where these people are from and kind of the world outside of, you know, where I grew up was always a very fascinating and curious thing that I always thought about exploring. So um, since then, I've always been kind of uh, in this kid that always wanted to explore. Uh, and I think most of us kind of grew up that way. We have this idea about how the worst, the rest of the world is, and we want to get to see a bit of it when we get older. So, uh, around me, I've always had people from different places, even locally in my hometown. Different people from different communities and 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 township always made me curious about people's background and places. So when I was growing up, I was always very keen on on traveling. So. Uh, the best part was because my family moved around quite a bit. Uh, by the time I was, you know, 17, I've seen a bit of the world already, you know, Switzerland, uh, New York City, which is a very diverse city. Uh, and then, and kind of just growing up in that environment was always, you know, I think that was motivating to me to want to see the rest of the world. So every chance I get, I think, you know, most of our were sort of adventures in a way. Uh, most people think about that in a much bigger, challenging 
way because it takes a lot of planning and figuring life out and trying to get out of your comfort zone. But for me, it's kind of a spontaneous thing that I, I do because that way you find ways to adapt, you know, challenge yourself a bit and just learn about other places really. So that's always been a bigger part of my life. So, you know, sort of a childhood thing, growing up and, and, and learning more about these different places around me and just really the curiosity about, you know, the world. It's what drives me to to want to be an adventurer. So um, I've had the opportunity to see a few places around the world, um, which is really cool because I'm sure you've experienced that too. The more you travel, the more you get out of your comfort space to see a few different places, the more you want to do it right there. Right. Hunger just grows and grows. So um, at this point, I just I just want to travel. I, I'm not really one... The focus is not really just be an overlander or anything like that, just be an adventurer, just mm -hmm. a, a bit of a Roma, really, you know, just explore as much as you can, um, meet a lot of really cool people, uh, see a lot of really interesting places and stuff like that. And and the personal growth, right, the wisdom and, and kind of the philosophy of all that really helps you grow and have different perspective about life in a way. So that's what it's been my um, kind of my motivating factor, really. Very cool. And how yeah. did you transition kind of into the overland scene, uh, you know, as far as finding your vehicle? You know, was there anybody kind of you looked up to to kind of, you know, you, you discovered this? And you're like, oh, this this looks pretty cool. I want to I want to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 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 interesting you asked because there is this perspective that the rest of the world has about Africa. Some of that is true. It's a very unique landscape. You know, it draws a lot of attention uh, in a way that people specifically went to Africa to just want to explore the landscape, right? See some really unique, iconic places, uh, places that you couldn't even, you know, get to sometimes extremely remote and people want to go into those regions and landscape and explore those places. And growing up, I've seen a lot of those tourists come through, you know, part of the region where I grew up. And, and I was just really fascinated by the way they all geared up and the kind of this adventurous life was always very, very cool to me. So growing up around that kind of culture was always, you know, always impacted me in a way. I'm like, if people from outside the world want to come see my country, you know, see these little townships and these cool places, and that is something that was always... Um, uh, kind of uh, motivating to me to to want to get to know more about these places. So I've seen a lot of people come through. You know, as a, as a kid, sometimes I even go like interact with some of these people and 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 find out where they're from, where they're going, what all the adventures has been like. And uh, and most of the time, everything they tell me is just so fascinating. Like, wow, you can just leave your home place. You know, drive across the continent. Sometimes they have to go through a few ferries around, you know, along the regions, and it, it's it was something that was really cool because, you know, my culture, you know, a lot of the West African culture, people are not really that adventurous in a way. People really, we have a more of a community, uh, traditional lifestyle where people like to really settle in a place with the families and friends and stuff like that. So, uh, for me, I was always wanted to get out and see the rest of the world. So when I see people like that, it, it really encourages me to just like, hey, if these people can do it, maybe, you know, I can That's do it cool. too when I get, when I get older. Because it was always people coming to learn about our culture, but very few people from our, our you know, our continent goes overseas to, to learn about those sort of things. More people go for, you know, better opportunity career-wise or professional life and stuff like that. But as an explorer, it's a really rare thing. And I thought... For me, all these places hold their own unique identities and stories and histories and stuff like that. And uh, and so seeing people coming through, I mean, land cruisers, land rovers, you know, Pajeros, Pathfinders, it was, it was just always very cool. So those things was really inspiring to me to want to do that when I get older. Uh, so I was already always a bit of an adventurer, kind of spiritually in a way, and couldn't wait to go on my first trip. And, uh, and my family, my family, you know, being a kind of a traveling family also helps because we're always constantly in different environments and different places. So that always kept kind of this 
uh, unique uh, interest of me wanting to to get out of my my country and see different places. So. Uh, that kind of adventurous personality was always part of my life since I was a child. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Let's get into kind of now you could like tell everyone what your vehicle is and like how you came to this decision. And then you, you <laughs> go as, as long into that as you want. I think it's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Well, thanks. Um, you know, I think, I think uh, again, you know, going back to some of the people that I've seen coming across the continent and the landscape, I really love seeing how their rigs were able to handle the landscape and some of the places that they can get to. Um, most of the time, you know, land cruisers, you know, 70, 80 series, um, they were very popular. Uh, land Rover Defenders. And the, the Defenders is always, you know, the Land Rover, the whole culture of Land Rover was always very cool because you talk Defenders, even Range Rover, that is not talked about much. They're all very unique mm-hmm. vehicles. They're very stylish in a way that the personality and characters, it's just everywhere you go, you see it, you know, a Defender, you just have to turn around and look at it again. You know, Land Rover has a kind of a unique character that everybody sort of admires. They do have this re- reputation of not being reliable, so people sort of like... Uh, stays away from. Have from, you seen an them? uptick in that lately? On like I saw oh, that yes. like on budget over like, yeah. like there's people that you know obviously if you're a car guy sure every car has some kind of failure to it to yeah. a you know yeah. most point yeah but like really just dog pile on 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 Land Rovers is crazy. It's it's crazy. It's been fun because for me it was you know one of the unique vehicles that I've seen across mostly you know, around the world, you see them all over the place. So growing up, I had two vehicles that I knew for sure that when I get older, I want to travel across the world with one of those vehicles, it's either a Land Cruiser or a Land Rover. Uh, and I've always been a big fan of Toyota because, I mean, we seen what Toyotas can do, the Land Cruisers all over the African deserts and through the swamps of, you know, is the Eastern African landscape and stuff, and I've always loved Land Cruisers, but I had I had a thing for Land Rovers, just the fact that they're more unique in a way, and, and they're very, you know, they have quite a bit of character. And so I, when it came down to picking a vehicle, I was just, I, I knew, originally I had, I had a 4th gen uh, 4Runner, and then I had, a GS 470, GX460 Lexus, yes. um, and after I got rid of those two vehicles, I, I knew right away what I, I actually sold my GX460 to get the discovery that I have now. So I was quite intentful about the decision on getting a, a Land Rover. Uh, nice. I had this whole idea about being kind of the adventurer that I am. I just want a vehicle so I can rover around. So hence my tag name, just just roving around. Uh, it's it's such a unique experience when people actually sometimes they see me like you're just roving around, aren't you? Like yeah, you know they don't even know that about yeah. me, but it just like just it just fits the profile and what I, like I intend yeah. I intended to do. So um, I, I love I love my discoveries. No three, um, it's been so far more than capable. So I'm enjoying exploring and just. And what I love about owning a Discovery or, you know, being a, you know, an all-wheel drive vehicle is that it takes very little planning on where to go and how to get there. You can just get up and go. There's, you know, as long as it's running, you will get there. Yeah. I mean, I remember watching my first Land Rover commercial, you know, the Camel Trophy journey. Mm-hmm. And they were barely on a paved road, you know. Most of the time they were in some deep water or some mud, and, and it was just very exciting to watch that whole adventure go down. So uh, it's a very inspiring vehicle, and I feel like it fits the idea and the personality and profile, the kind of what I want to do. Uh, so I was very, that's a very simple decision for me to go with the Discovery, and, and I'm just really enjoying the experience with it. And you've, it, it seems like you've been doing a lot of maintenance, you know, keeping up with it with the times. You know, I, I could relate. I've got an older vehicle. i got a 23-year-old uh, third-gen Toyota 4Runner. And we were talking about before the show, you know, I just did a, yeah. a, a, a drain and, and, and fill on my transmission because right. it was, like, as dark as coffee. <laughs> and then it's supposed to be, you know, it's black as coffee and it's supposed to be yeah. red. So yeah. after about, uh, you know, 
10 or not 10 after about four gallons of flushing you know like at a, a quarter of the time it was crazy yeah uh, finally got it to to get red again but man there's nothing you know it's it's a catch-22 if you're working on right. your vehicle you get frustrated at it but at the yeah. same time you got that peace of mind that right you know, it's good to go yeah absolutely i think that's what i i actually enjoyed that quite a bit i remember a few friends when they saw me you know, buying these cars, they're like, you sure you want the Land Rover, you know, all that it takes to keep it going. But it's actually been a really unique bonding experience for me, me and my vehicle. We have kind of, uh, even today I was sitting here in the middle of my work and I just turned around. I don't know where I was telling, you know, my, my fiance how much I love my Land Rover. Just in the uh-huh. middle of the, the day, I was just like, I just, I absolutely love it because we've that's been cool. really bonding in a way. I remember the first thing I did, you know, did a tune-up, coil packs, and went through that, you know, had a bunch of scratches and stuff like that. And it, it was really fun. I, mm-hmm. I, I take those challenges, challenges in a sort of uh, interesting way. And, and every, after every trip and after, you know, every drive, I'll, I'll give it a kiss and, I t- you know, I tell her how much I enjoy it, you know. Uh, I appreciate every opportunity that you know, it's giving me to get out and just have the adventures that I'm, I'm having. So uh, I know it takes a lot of work to really keep these older vehicles running, uh, especially when you do these trips. I mean, my last longest trip was to New Orleans, I think it was what, 10 and a half, 11 straight hours. Wow. And not a single hiccup, you know. And, yeah. I, and I, I didn't, you know, it didn't scare me because I, I trusted that it would do the trip just fine. Um, because I know all the maintenance was up to date and, and I, I just have, you know, good, I just trust the, the vehicle because I know that it's been well maintained and I know all the issues with it because I've been doing a lot of the maintenance on it myself. So yeah. there is there's no hesitation whatsoever, you know, with me jumping into it right now and driving anywhere five, ten hours, you know, because I know that it'll be, it'll be able to get there and take me back. That's good. Yeah. I'm in the, yeah. in the midst of coming out of a lot of frustration with my vehicle i'm about to uh go to all terrain tires for mud tires my mud tires are just too too rough right now yeah, from yeah. being worn unevenly um due to a lot of front end problems but anyway i'm putting some all trains on there um not t- not 10 ply i'm gonna go a yeah. six ply and okay. see how that goes you know it might That's be a lighter cool. tire but we'll see yeah. And yeah. I'll have that all dialed in, ready to go for rendezvous here in the next couple of weeks. So I'm curious as to, you know, how how it pans out. And I know I know you're going to be at rendezvous, and I'm excited to meet you again and see you there. Yeah, yeah. And you're you're rolling in with a crew from your area, so that's going to be fun to meet those guys. And I think it's going to just be rendezvous is like my favorite time of the year. And I'm not going to hijack this podcast over <laughs> rendezvous, but I think it's every time I get a chance to plug it, I just absolutely love it. So. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's exciting. It's my it's my first time. It's it's really exciting. Even some of the guys that I've talked to locally have gone a few times now, but they're just as excited, you know. Yeah. And I've heard that there are not too many, you know, Land Rovers that shows up there. Um, mine is still quite basic, really. Uh, I haven't really done much modification to it. Uh, I added a KO2 tires. And I recently went from soft tent to hot shell. I went roof nest and uh, got rid of my Smithy build. Is that the tent. new the new tent that came out? Roof nest with the uh, yeah roof nest Falcon X XL. Uh, it's from quite Amazon large. or whatever. Uh, no, the one you're talking about, I think, is uh, what is it called? Oh, that's not roof nest. That's something. No, that's, that's not like roof the nest. knockoff version of yeah, the knockoff got. version. Yeah, you know, everybody's all these ah, companies funny. now coming up and, and making all these. these There's tents a ton now, of them, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's really cool. I've taken. I think I actually posted it in a group about the convenience of it. It takes me about, and I'm still trying to get a bit more efficient with it. Uh, it takes me with the soft one. It takes me. I mean, it took me what, fifteen to. 20 minutes to get it all set up and be happy with it. And then about 25 minutes or so to put it back together. And, yeah. you know, my car is already top, you know, it's kind of boxy, so it's quite tall. And sometimes I have to get on the roof rack to just go around and trying to do all that, put the covers on. It was just too much. I love yeah. going, camping for a night, getting up in the morning, get my coffee and hit the trails. I'm, I'm an explorer, so I don't need to spend 40 minutes putting a tent together. I want to be able to just pull up anywhere and pop my tent and, and, and hang out and enjoy the environment, you know? So 
got a friend that really was being kind enough to give me a good deal on this hard shell because it's upgrading and that's been great it actually fit my car really well and for some bizarre reason my ride quality has actually gotten a bit better because the mm. other thing was set far back on the roof rack in a way I am now using the front basket for storage and stuff but this is this new one has balanced the weight for me a bit better and it's actually nice. been really really good uh, the wind noise has come down quite a bit and I just I love the the efficiency of it just pop up and, and set down and, and be ready to to chill so it's really really cool uh, yeah. yeah the the rendezvous is supposed to be exciting it's gonna be a place for me to also network a bit more just just learning really um, mm -hmm. I think part of adventure or overlanding you know I think the term is used so much I, I, I sort of hesitate to use it because I'm just like I'm just an explorer I just want to get out and explore and, 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 and enjoy the landscape but you know it's a way for me to network a bit and just meet people and, and hear more about the adventure stories and stuff like that because I think we all in that kind of retrospect can kind of like relate a bit because everybody has this unique experience in different places but when we come together our stories sort of like kind of really come along you know because not a lot of people you know there the culture seems like it's growing a lot now i mean i've seen people who are toyota corollas with the tents on top now everybody's trying to get out into nature and have this experience and i think the culture is growing which is cool and but there's still a lot of people that don't know how to do this stuff you know don't yeah don't know how to plan they, they have no idea where to go and i think it's cool that we have this great opportunity to get out and, and, and experience the outdoor life and just kind of get away from all the rat race the madness you know mm -hmm. all the electronics at least and stuff like that so it's a really it's a really fun and 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 cool project that they have throughout the year i think a lot of different uh overlanding communities do these meetups throughout the year and uh, my first one in the Ozarks, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Nice. Did you go to, to more Expo last year in the spring? No, I didn't. I actually had just gotten my rig then, so it was still very early, and I was doing quite a bit of work on it. I think it was actually sitting in the garage with the hood off and engine mm -hmm. all torn out then. So oh, uh, I know Dan, uh, Dan in our group here in Oklahoma City, is very active in the community. Actually, he invited me. Uh, to go check it out, but I didn't have the chance to go. But mm. yeah, that's a fun one to kind of kick off the year, and then I think rendezvous is a good one to kind of in. I say that because I don't believe in overland or camping season, so I got to say yeah. that loosely. But for yeah. the most part, you know, people come out of their winter hidings, and <clears> you know, they they kind of want to meet people in the in the spring say you know, yeah, check in on yeah. people and then the fall they yeah. want to say goodbye and, hey we'll see you next spring <laughs> <laughs> so that's the way i look at it like the old times you know when people would yeah. actually go to a rendezvous and yeah. different meetups like that that's all they want yeah. to do is just be nosy yeah. and see how yeah. people have been doing the last year <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially after the whole summer you know, after a hot summer, you know, everybody's now able to get out. I think it's going to be packed because it's been so hot, you know. It has been miserable. Been, yeah, it's been really tough getting together and stuff. So I think a lot of people are going to come out just because the weather's going to be really nice. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, at, by the time this one airs, Big Iron will have been over. And as of now, they're projecting for it to be in the upper 80s, low 90s, um, yeah. which if everyone remembers last year, it was hotter yeah. than heck. Um, yeah. And it was like June twentieth, twenty one, something like that. Wow. And it was like a hundred and five degrees heat. You know, the heat index was like crazy, and humidity was crazy. But we'll see how it does this year. And I can't wait yeah. to see um, yeah. pictures and stuff of everyone. That's that's uh, that's a pretty fun event too. Yeah, yeah. And you you having some events on on the Friday before the event uh, at, at the for, for rendezvous. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna do a. Uh, we're sorry. We're gonna. I wasn't even talking in the mic. <laughs> we're gonna do a budget overland hangout at, uh, okay. at Rendezvous um, at seven p.m. in front of okay. the main stage. Yeah. And what's cool is I, I reached out to some companies and um, we're gonna and and people in the group even have stepped up and other okay. companies stepped up. And they're wanting to donate or contribute. I should say it's not a donation uh, to this giveaway, which is just super fun. So once you show yeah. up to the event. Yeah. At uh, Friday night, you'll get a ticket, and then I think uh, I think I'm gonna max it out till 7:30 or something. Then okay. after that, no one yeah. gets a ticket, so you can't just okay. wait till the drawing. 
Yeah. And then uh, we're going to hang out. We might do a recording of the shenanigans show for a Monday. Um, cool. And then we'll start doing some drawings. I've got about 15, 20 items to give away that are, are well north of $50 a piece. And, you know, okay. You know, pretty awesome. Well, huge Sounds giveaway. Exciting. Probably over $1,000 worth of stuff to give away. Nice. So. Yeah. So- sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I, I love giving away. If anybody yeah. knows me, like, you know, you can go buy stickers and stuff like that. Sometimes yeah. I throw in an extra sticker just of something else. It's like, hey, have fun. You know, yeah, I remember you give me a handful of stickers. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I can't say no to anybody. And I was yeah. like, okay, cool. Here you go, man. That's the way yeah, I was like cool. leaving. Yeah. That was very cool, man. Yeah. Because I it's never neat. win anything ever. So, like, <laughs> I always make sure, you know, even if it's something small, I'll make sure yeah. to, to make somebody feel like a winner for that little bit, you know. Oh, that's, that's very grateful. That's cool. That's so tell cool. me about some stateside uh, trips you've taken. I guess it wouldn't have been with your uh, R2 um, or D2, whatever. But um, any other yeah, any trips I you've think, taken? Yeah, I've done quite a bit, I think, uh I've done several trips to different parts of the Ozarks now. Um, I, I mentioned my long trip to New Orleans. Uh, just, I went through Galveston, camped on the beach for a night, and then got on the ferry to Galveston. That was, that was a fun trip. And then through the coastline to New Orleans, that was really fun. Um, some of my biggest trips are actually coming much later in the year, in the next couple of months, uh, heading towards New Mexico, Arizona, walking to Colorado a little bit. Uh, it's coming up here in about you know a few weeks. So I think when I looked at the map, it's showing around 34 to 40 hours of driving. And that trip's coming up soon. You said? Yeah, in a few weeks after the wow. Ozarks. After the Ozarks meet up, that's 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 coming right after that. So right around so Thanksgiving. New Mexico, Arizona parts of southwest colorado. colorado are you going to yeah. utah uh not as far as but you never know you know it, it's right wow. now as it as it stands is going to be a lot of driving and there's going to be a lot of cool places to explore so are you yeah. going solo uh yeah yeah i am cool man how long yeah. are you going to try to take off uh right now it's looking like about just a little over five days yeah hmm. Five days to a week, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of driving just to get that's somewhere of, pretty, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. No offense, that's what Kansas, it takes. Arkansas. <laughs> not, not Arkansas. I love Arkansas. Kansas. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas, yeah. Nebraska, Dakotas. I don't know. Yeah. All y'all suck. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Running. Well, it's funny you mentioned Ooh. that because my, my buddy Chris and I, we've been pretty much every weekend for the past, for the past, three months or so we've been hitting all the Oklahoma back roads. So we've done nice. a lot of driving around uh, back roads in Oklahoma. And then last couple of weeks we've been going east. So we went further east through, you know, Tahlequah, a little bit into the Ozarks. So last couple of weeks we've just been every That's other weekend. That's pretty down there. We, we, yeah, it's absolutely lovely. We've done a lot of that. So we're like, okay, now we feel like we've conquered this region a little yes. bit. So now we need to step out. Yes. So, uh, now the the trip is gonna be going out further into a few more states, and that's that's really exciting because I I want to see my land in a different landscape, different challenges, and mm-hmm. just also for myself, right? And and kind of really figure out a lot of things for myself on the way, and and really learn how to be more efficient and learn more about you know discovering different places and and just just having fun, really. So you were talking about being more efficient. What does that look like for you uh, now as to where you want to be? Yeah. What's efficiency look like? Efficiency is not to worry if you don't feel like you've taken your whole household with you and just really understand that the trip is really about the experience. You know, that's why even some of the stuff I have now are from you know, are from friends, like my cooking set, you know, the tent is about the only expensive thing that I have and really just learning how to be a bit of minimalist really because, you know, uh, this whole experience is coming back to where I'm learning to be happy with um, where I'm at and, and what I'm doing with, you know, with my life in, in sort of a way where I'm growing both ways, right? You're learning 
you know from your adventures and and nature and and people that you come across and sharing their experiences with you and then and then apply applying that in your everyday life so you know i've seen a lot of different setup with different rigs with different people and i keep thinking every time when i see those things i'll think about what i need and what i don't need and i think the experience really depends on each trip gives you different challenges so you're trying to figure out you know you might be in a place where you might not need a certain things but you know you have them it, of course it's a good resource to have on the go but you also were you learning how to go far into places where you act, can actually adapt to the environment right and then really feel like you're comfortable there where you're not short on your supplies and you're really learning how to manage your supplies sort of a survival experience really but not to the extreme you're, you're still right. there and enjoying the experience so that's what efficiency looks like to me because i feel like every day around me you know through my jobs through everyday interaction with people i see that all the time where i'm like you know one of my funnest philosophy is i think it's steve jobs he says something about before you implement something new, always think about what you have and how best you can make use of that, right? Mm -hmm. Before you keep adding on to what you already have, what you have now, how efficient, effectively can you use it, those tools. So I always think about that, like, my, my rig didn't, you know, Land Rover did a thing where they skip a certain features with a certain years. Mine doesn't have a center diff lock. I have four by four all times and I have and I rely heavily on my traction to help me through a lot of the, you know, the obstacles. And I know a lot of people, the first thing they do, they put lift on it, they install the CDL, and like there'll be a lot of places where Land Rover has done perfectly fine. Even sometimes with the bad traction, I've done quite well. So like there's places where I go, I don't do a lot of extreme uh, things with, you know, my car. So I know it can handle those sort of challenges in the environment. So. There are a lot of things that I think about in that way. And when it comes to supplies, um, I'll take stuff that I need for the duration of the trip. And then I'll try to manage how much we need or how much I need throughout that time. And it's really a personal challenge because that's really the experience to be in a remote place where you feel isolated from the physical world, you know, the sort of the rigidness of it all. And then just feel calm, you know, not anxious, not bothered by it all and just be happy with the moment and everything that's happening around you. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few things. I think that's, that's really good. What you said, there's a few things I want to touch on, like, um, as far as what maybe enhance or might make this fun. So first of all, we're, I think that's funny about the gear. So when people get into this, they have no idea what they're doing or how to do it. So then they go yeah. to uh, Amazon, they load their cart up and they buy all the stuff. Well, then they go camping and they don't even know where anything is and, and how to use this stuff. And then they get frustrated and discouraged, and they just spent thousands of dollars on all this stuff. But right. the best advice is just to go minimalist. Yeah. And if you want the creature comforts or the amenities and all that stuff, then make that better judgment as to what you need to buy. So it goes all the way back to Budget Overland, yeah. where you know, you're trying to do this as cheaply as possible. Not necessarily as cheaply as possible, but as budget-minded as possible. Nobody right. wants to go out there and just spend a bunch of money on something you're never going to get a return for financially. You know, you're going to get memories and all that stuff. Sure, that's a, an emotional investment. It's not a phys like a physical investment as far as monetary-wise. Anyway, so whenever you spend this money, you're not going to get an ROI on that other than smiles. Yeah, for sure. So I think it's also funny that people try to, to, you know, just the whole buy once, cry once crowd, um, and all that. You know, it's it's just funny on on a whole lot of levels because we're all on different levels. Right. right. So you know, it, and that's just one little thing I got out. Of it. Is there something you do? like as far as technology wise like for me whenever i go camping i think it's fun to take cameras video all that stuff you know just because the technology is there it's on my phone i yeah. could do it anyway is there something yeah. that you enjoy further than just adventuring and discovering um that you enjoy about this overland thing that you incorporate with you like a hobby that you take with you to the woods or, or whatever that, that you also get an extra benefit or an extra pleasure or joy out of that yeah, absolutely. I think we're all 
a bit of philosophers on our own. And so I tend to captivate uh, or at least try to captivate very unique or interesting places or moment and it kind of to grasp different perspectives because, you know, I think, you know, my background, you know, where I'm from, we're very traditional, we're kind of really minimalist, really, because even technology growing around the world, there's still a lot of places in, in Africa that doesn't have that full capabilities, right? So we do it what we have. So what happens is that we tend to really pay attention to our environment a lot more critically in a way. And when you're in places where it's more remotely, you you had the opportunity to really captivate things a little bit more in a in a deeper aspect, right? So, you know, I, I think I'm a, I'm kind of an enthusiastic writer. Uh, I would love to write a bit more often. And in my whole life's perspective about just really inspiring people, really, I think I think that is something that I really believe in. So if I can share, you know, a little bit of this good experience that I have with someone in a, in a philosophical way to really motivate and inspire them. I'm like, there's a lot of wars and, and conflict around the world, you know, too much hostility in the world, you know. So I think that is kind of the kindness that I like to extend to the community around me. So I, I try to captivate something interesting in that space. I mean, I, one of my funnest trips so far this year was just to a couple hours drive to White Rock Recreational uh, Mountains in the Ozark. And it was such a unique experience. And I'm like, I even told friends at work here, I said, you can take my rig anytime, just a couple hours drive, just take my rig, take your yes. partner or your friend, go on a solo trip, just go experience it. Because I think taking that moment away and having a little bit of peace for yourself really helps, you know, and, yeah. and, and that's what I try to do when I go on these trips. I, like, I try to captivate a woman. If it's writing a little story or making a little video or something, what I feel will inspire someone, you know? Yeah. And that's and that is the whole adventure, adventure story of my life, really. It's really just to try to inspire and motivate people. I think we all have something to give in returns to one another. And that's why I travel as little as possible with, you know, what I need in supply-wise so I can really interact with this space and you know and and i love to really discover new places because that's where kind of the whole experience is actually if i just go and sit by the lake all weekend and all these wonderful landscapes around me i, I would miss it all you know so i really like to get out and really captivate these cool interesting places around the places that i go visit or try to explore at least yeah do you enjoy like hiking uh you know if you're at camp do you, do you go for long hikes like, do you, do, you, do you seek hiking trails while you're out, or do you just primarily stick to, to the Forest Service? Uh, it's a bit of both. You know, some areas you really have to, get, you know, get off your vehicle to really capture a better view of the landscape and just really soak it in, right? So for the most part, you know, if I get to a place, you know, you just feel like you want to get off your, you know, your track and, and just stretch your legs and go up a little, a little trail to get maybe on, on, on a nice little mountain top and really soak in the view. That's always something that I enjoy doing. So I'm always like looking for a little trail off the, you know, off the, off the, the road into a nice little spot. And, uh, and so I'm always like keeping my eyes out for those little spots along the way when I'm, when I'm driving about. Yeah. From, yeah, I, we sometimes my wife's gonna laugh if she's listening to this episode because I'm not really a hiker type, but I'm trying to get more involved with that. Uh, but anyway, none was. So I like to look for hiking or scenic places. Yeah. I also enjoy historical places that you know, cool. um, if there's historical backgrounds or whatever. Yeah. And I also yeah. like small town, super small town, yeah. back hole in the wall. <laughs> kind of towns too. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And if there's a little diner or something there to eat, I'm stopping. I don't even yeah. care if it's for like an appetizer or something. It's like I've got to stop. Yeah. And, and I love that that portion of it. And then also, I like to balance it out. Harder trails and scenic trails. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. rock landing or anything like that. I think everybody's got their own pace and everything. But right. sometimes that gets boring. 
and yeah. <laughs> monotonous. So let's yeah. go, you know, hit the highway again, go somewhere yeah. else. I think that's what's yeah. cool about having everything, yeah, you know, in your rig. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it, it's, you're, you're definitely right. I think, I think the whole experience come together really well when you do that. When you're in and out and and checking out some of these places on the way. And uh, where you're at, and and I love I love that part you mentioned about you know little places in the whole kind of deal. Uh, my partner is an urban planner, and you know they're really keen on writing about you know communities and and places and towns and cities and stuff like that. And uh, and it's it's always interesting. You know we're both not from here. We've been living in the U.S. now for a few years, and. We always feel like every state or every city we go is kind of like a different country almost. It's, it's yeah. kind of a uniqueness to the place, and the people are very <laughs> That's good. desiring their own ways. And it's always nice finding these cool little places to, you know, to explore. So we enjoy that a lot. Actually, that's one of our biggest motivation. In, in our, on our next adventures, we're pretty much gonna be writing, you know, a lot about these places because they represent a a kind of it's like all these spots that you you pass, you know, through towns and, and, you know, landmarks and places that you go to. Sometimes you might stop and take a picture, but a lot of these places actually have a very interesting story. Um, yeah. And two, you might see a place like Oklahoma, but the main story of this foundation of this place is actually in some little town somewhere, you know. And you go through those places, if you don't stop and really explore, you might never know what's the place about. So on our next few trips, we're actually going to be doing a lot of stopping and, and chatting to people. And that's nice. really going to be our passion uh, to write more about these places. So there's going to be a lot are of you, storytelling. Are you going to do vlogs or, or blogs, anything like that, or just strictly published? So. Uh a bit of both. I think it is, we want to be interactive as possible, right? Uh, and so I think blog is typically, you know, what most people tend to do. But we're going we're gonna to try to be quite interactive because I think a lot of these experiences, you know, people can only imagine how that's like, you know, going to these places and talking to people about their experiences living in those small towns and places. Yeah. I mean, I, I know people in Tulsa that don't even come to Oklahoma City. And it's like an hour, mm -hmm. 15, yeah. you know? It's like, we don't have anything to do in Oklahoma City. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's very interesting, and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be really exciting. So we're starting a whole website thing, and gonna be very cool. actually writing, writing a, a full article about these experiences and kind of like quite a storytelling experience, yeah. Do you have a website or anything that you want to say now, or do you want to wait? I want to wait, but everything about my tag is just roving around. If you search it, you'll find me. Just okay. roving around. Okay. Yeah, it's just me and my, I think and this my is partner so making cool memories. <laughs> I had no idea you were doing that. That's so cool. And you could incorporate yeah. that with overlanding as you, on yeah. your travels. Yeah, that is so absolutely. cool, man. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would totally, you. I mean, even that could double as a podcast slash, you know, YouTube channel. Yeah, you know that would be. Yeah. I would love to watch that. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're very excited because uh, you know I my current project I'm working on is uh, it's actually a very unique uh, track that I picked up in the desert in Lubbock. I call it the desert. Everywhere around Midland is the desert. <laughs> um, it's a 2003 Discovery Two like mine, but it has a, a diesel uh, Defender 110 300 TDI uh, swap. Um, that's what I'm currently working on, putting it all together. I saw now a few loose ends with it, and, and, and it's going to be on the road soon. Um, part of the excitement that I have about the Rendezvous in the Ozark is actually sharing a bit of this project, because uh, it's actually quite a, an interesting story about the D2 with the 300 TDI, because Land Rover didn't actually do that, and they, they went from TDI to td5 on the on the newer discoveries which is 2002 and up i think so to have something like this especially in north america is it's super rare um wow yeah it's super rare i think when i mentioned it to a few friends in our group uh there were one or two that i know of in the states so it's wow. it's pretty pretty rare so it's a cool project that i think I think our motivation is actually taking this thing back to Africa and driving through the desert. So, wow. 
uh, we were really keen on sharing a lot more about this project and, and kind of the excitement about working on this car right now and getting it ready for much bigger adventures. Yeah. Where the where in the world did you find that thing at? If you don't mind saying, <laughs> you don't have to tell uh, us. I mean, did it fall in your lap? Were you searching really hard? Did a buddy tell you about it? It sort of fell it? on my lap. It sort of fell on my lap. I was uh, I was always I'm always looking for another. You know, it's kind of I don't know if it's the same with the Toyota guys, but I think with the Land Rover, it's as soon as you get one, you you're looking for another one. <laughs> Um, so, you know, some yeah, people have that's it. That's 100% relatable. I could relate to yeah, that. Yeah, right. You know, people have parts car and next project car and whatnot. Sure. I've always been, I, I've been, a, you know, not really, I wouldn't really say a project car person. I would have a car here and there. I mean, my daily has been, uh, which is sitting in my garage now, it's a 1996 BMW 750 uh, V12. I've had it for, what, seven, eight years plus now. And I, I love the I love those kind of cool old classic cars in a way you know European have a lot of character. Uh, I I was looking for another discovery and this one just sort of popped up. Um, it was sitting in some shop in Lubbock. Uh, they did a swap for the for the owner and he sort of just left the state and never really bothered with it. So the guys were trying to get rid of it. Um, they had the whole information about it wrong, and when I saw the post, I actually couldn't tell what the motor was because it was covered in dust. I mean, you couldn't tell what the car was, uh, what the engine was in it. So we went back and forth for a few days, and then I just decided to take a weekend drive there and see it in person. And I was actually absolutely blown away. I was like, a 3D, a 3D 100 TDI in a, in a D2, and running all really complete swap with Crazy. automatic gearbox not even the manual gearbox still has the automatic gearbox it's quite a unicorn so it's been a really fun project i was able to get it back to oklahoma and i've been working on it for the past past couple of couple of months so that's fun yeah that's cool yeah. man you're, you're gonna treasure that i, I love stories <laughs> like that i've I've yeah. got a couple little buggies that are kind of like that, you know, that you, yeah. you just stumble yeah. across. You're like, I just got to have yeah. it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. Dude, we're coming up on 50 minutes. Is there anything we haven't covered that you would like to touch on? I'm sure we can go on and on and on, but we'll, we'll, we'll save it for, for next time. But I think the only thing I want to add is, you know, just, I'm, I'm just really enjoying the experience and hoping to meet more people, you know, learn more about, I say learn more about the overlanding culture. I think I want to kind of hear everybody's perspective and experience about what they think overlanding and what what they enjoy about it, kind of this interaction that we're having, right? There's something mm -hmm. unique about it that everybody likes. Yeah. And I love it that there's all these kind of diverse type of, you know, you know, rigs, you know, vehicle of all kinds. It's not just if you don't have a Land Cruiser or, or yeah. a Defender or this four wheel drive, you can't. Everybody's is trying to get and I love that. And so I I'm, think I'm really looking uh, forward to connecting more. Yeah, I think it's it goes back to like kind of what's in our DNA, like as far as, you know, being primitive and adventurous. Yeah. And yeah. It, it feels like we're in charge of our destiny or whatever we're doing because we are. You yeah. know, it's just you don't have to yeah. ask permission to drive over a leaf. Or a thousand, right. you know, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, tread lightly, though. I'm not saying just go off in the woods and just <laughs> bulldoze yeah. a forest. Yeah, we but, know, we know yeah. those Jeep guys. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Okay, that's fair. We could we'll say side by side guys and 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 some Jeep guys, but we'll see. It yeah, matter. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, and and the, and the other thing is just be safe when you're out. You know, take Absolutely. care of yourself. Take take care of the landscapes. You know, I think I think we we are all appreciative of the opportunity to get out and and be able to just you know enjoy the the adventure. So take care of the landscape. Take care of your surrounding. Yeah. You know, be safe and and enjoy it and enjoy it. You know, yeah. Yep. All right, guys, if you want to get a hold of Jean-Louis, you can find him on Instagram. Are you on Facebook also or just Instagram? Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I started a little TikTok thing recently, but like I said, you know, if you just look for just roving around, um, just roving around, you, you see me on Instagram and, uh, and Facebook. 
and uh, very soon in the next few weeks my website will be out because I have a lot nice. of data like I have plenty of data just even this interaction is, is really special and I'm, and I'm really grateful and and I think what I like is how we all kind of incorporate each other's kind of story together and if you've if you've met me and interacted with me your name will be mentioned because I think we're all really more intertwined than we realize yeah. so I, cool. I like to I bring everybody so together and share our stories so yeah 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 very cool it is a small world after all as corny it as is. that sounds it is a small it world is. it is man. guys i will post the links all down in the description go give them a like a follow i'm curious to see how this website turns out and uh, all the the blogging and vlogging yeah. and book writing along the way <laughs> turns yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, that's it's awesome. life. It's an adventure, and our stories. You know, I think, you know, I was thinking the other day. You know, a lot of people that have interacted with me it was like, yeah, go talk to this guy. He tell you something philosophical. Like, I think yeah. in the long run, what we yeah. have left, we're gonna have behind is our legacy, <laughs> the little bit of stories, and you know, our interaction with you know with one another. That's what people are gonna remember. You know, yep. and, and the rest is just going to be history in the background, you know, so um, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Very good. Dude, I appreciate you hopping on here. I will see you at Rendezvous in the Ozarks. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll catch up again. Guys, if you're going to be at Rendezvous, don't forget to go to the hangout in front of the main stage at 7 p.m. on Friday the 13th. We've got over $1,000 worth of giveaways. Once you show up, Ask for a ticket, you will receive a ticket. If you show up strictly and solely for the prime purpose of trying to win something last minute, you will not be given a ticket. Boo-hoo. See you all here Monday for the Overland Shenanigans. Bye-bye.